What I would like to do is uh, call the meeting to order at um, 3.06. Uh, um, this is the um, Board of Selectmen work session on Thursday, January 2nd. Um, this meeting is being recorded by the recording clerk for record keeping. And I've already been informed by Mr. Gant that he would like to record the meeting as well and is doing so with my uh, um, um, permission. He's welcome to do it, period. Um, there's an attendance sheet going around. Um, everybody knows who Mr. Larson is, so I'm going to make sure he's included. Um, and um, no, I'd also like to uh, welcome uh, Kevin Gabriel to the meeting with us. Um, this um, is a essentially a, could be a relatively short meeting. Um, I've asked the town administrator, Kevin, to uh, present the initial draft of the FY21 budget. Um, this is not the meeting we're going to go through and discuss line item by line item by line item because this is kind of the first time we've seen it and I think we need a little time. It will get presented formally to us with possibly some repetition of the points that um, Kevin will make today. Um, it will be presented formally to us on Monday. It goes up in board docs that day. Everybody sees it. This is a draft. It's 95% or better, but it may have a couple minor changes. But this primarily to introduce us to it and to have Kevin give us kind of a heads up and flag some things that we may want to in our weekend reading look at and be prepared for. Um, the other thing I would say is that, um, I'm probably taking a thunder away because I know you have some of these in your <laughs> mm -hmm. list too. Um, uh, in discussing this with Kevin, it became apparent um, particularly with uh, Mr. Gant being out of vacation on our at next after Monday um, official selectmen's meeting, um, that I think it's really important the four of us be present for budget discussions. So, um, you know, tighten your belts, everybody, or tighten your seatbelts. We're going to do three weeks of Board of Selectmen working sessions, three weeks in a row, so that we can use that time to take the the time we need to um, discuss this, they will be basically single or possibly talk about Warren a little bit too on those, but essentially single purpose um, sessions and so on, which we will announce. And of course, they'll be open to the public and we can move to a bigger room if a lot of people show up. But um, it just seems that this is particularly important, being Kevin's first year, and um, you may be as impressed as I am with his thoroughness to date. So, um, having said all that, um, I would like to uh, turn item three over to Kevin Herbert, our town administrator. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so, first and foremost, budget. <laughs> it's been pretty busy the last week or two, well, the last four weeks, but especially the last couple when it comes to the budget. Um, we have have sort of trial by fire for myself personally, but um, I said this before and I'll say it again, it's uh, the, the time, it's been a lot of stress, a lot of time put into it, but it's been good time put towards it, uh, needed time to understand uh, not just what the numbers are, but what's behind these numbers. And so, um, like uh, the chairman said, we will formally be submitting a package of budget information to, to you folks on Monday at the Board of Selectmen meeting, um, give you some highlights then, um, as well as today, of what's within there. Uh, today, we're probably 90-95% there. Um, we just want to make sure, uh, the initial timeline said that we'd be submitting that budget on, on Monday, um, but we're, with the working group session, we've been working extra hard, Catherine especially, um, and making sure that we have this information uh, as, as tight as we could for today's meeting. Um, so you have something that you can go back and, and, and start reviewing. Um, as the chairman said, we will be submitting um, Hopefully the same document to you if it doesn't have too many changes between now and then. But um, the conversation we have today um, and for the conversations with a couple of the departments, um, we might have a tweak here or there, but we feel very confident with the work that's been done um, within it. Kevin, can I just ask one sure. thing? If another packet comes, we're going to be reviewing this one. Could you just highlight for us what has changed for the Monday meeting mm -hmm. between the packet you're presenting on Monday and this? Absolutely. Just to make it easier? Absolutely. So there's there's a lot of information um, associated with this document here. Um, 
more detail on the revenue side, um, more information related to uh, the backup on some of the changes associated with any line item that has gone up in cost. Um, all that information is getting its final reviews. But um, with the, the working session today and how far along we've come and the amount of effort put into it, it I'm proud to say we're in a really great spot around the budget. Uh, and any changes that happen today until Monday, we'll certainly highlight them okay. um, at the meeting. Thank you. Um, so just to kind of review the calendar to date of what we've been working on, uh, budgets were um, due from the department heads um, to our town account, Catherine, um, in two tiers, tier one, tier two. Tier one was on the 20th, tier two was on the 27th of December. Um, so built in there was a holiday and another holiday. But um, what then happens is each of those individual budgets get compiled into a single budget um, that has the entirety of it, which is what hit what's here today, um, which we call the Omnibus. Um, and in addition to that, like I said, there's a lot of backup information that gets worked on as well. Um, but that's what really the work that's been done over the last week and a half plus um, is preparing all of that. And Kevin, just for the record, my understanding is the Omnibus budget is our operating budget. Correct. And then we have other articles here and there that may include capital items and so on. But mm -hmm. I think it's important for anybody who may be looking to understand this is the operating budget, which more or less reflects the on should reflect the ongoing expenses, not special expenses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so just budgets were were due prior to those budgets being due. I did have a, the opportunity, basically my first day on, where Debbie was scheduling. <laughs> Pretty crazy with all the department heads. Well, you've been here for a month. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, and, and I know. <laughs> um, we had a chance to, and you're probably seeing one. You've been five years. Right? I, 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 I'm very familiar now with the office. <laughs> um, I, I, I had a chance to meet all the department heads, and what we did is we went line item by line item of their proposed budgets at the time, because of the time the budgets were due, and when I arrived, some of the budgets at the time were not 100, percent but the Department heads, for the most part, were close to it of what they were going to submit, and the ones who weren't at least had some ideas of potential changes they might include. So when the budgets were presented to Catherine and I over the last week and a half, a lot of those items that we had previously talked about were identified in the budget and were, were still there. So we, we had a good understanding of what those represented uh, and what was behind them. Um, can we one other question before yeah, you dive in? Of course. Um, when Robin was here, she had made the recommendation that some items maybe should move over from capital into operating. Mm -hmm. Has any of that happened, or to John's point, is this strictly operating as we know operating with no capital being moved over into this budget? Great question. So, um, yeah, basically what we have here is um, a budget that is in compliance with the guidelines with FinCom, which includes no additional increases okay. to, to the uh, other categories within here. Um, the Recurring costs such as the radios for the police station or turnout gear for the fire department, which um, every year, say, has a $10,000 um, cost associated with it. Um, those have been included in the capital, but is up for discussion on if it's something we want to include in the operating budget. Okay, um, but nothing has been moved over yet. It still remains in capital. part of the conversation. I thought we'd give him a year to get his <laughs> well, that, No, just because that would have been confusing. That would be a very good question. That would be my thought, too. I understand what Robin was saying, and I, and I agree with her, okay? Uh, but laying it on him at this point in time, and he and Catherine trying to make this thing work in the yeah. course of a month, um, it, those items deserve some more conversation, I think. And we'll get there, and I think we should proceed. It probably deserves a conversation with the finance committee too, so that we're on the same page. Yeah. yeah. But I, I, my sense very much is that what we're trying to do is, in a sense, using the template that's been used in the past, which everybody else is familiar with, um, to do the best job possible for this year. So it will be structured as it has been in previous years. The numbers, of course, change a little bit here and there, but the sort of approach and structure isn't going to change. But as um, Kevin said. Um, I think it is important that we have a conversation early with the FinCom. Um, I know they don't start meeting until fall usually, but we may see what we can do to um, get together with them and talk about this in um, a sense of do we want to do this, what are the pros and cons, whether it's beneficial or not beneficial and so on, and to have that conversation 
before the preparation begins for next year, but not to put it on this year. There's enough going on. Yeah, especially since we had already broached the subject of even just raising the level, the dollar level, and FinCon said, let's have a discussion. Yeah. So mm -hmm. even the dollar level for, for capital, mm -hmm. they stepped back. Mm -hmm. so we're just we're keeping it the same mm -hmm. so that Kevin doesn't have to fight any battles with anybody else except us. <laughs> <laughs> and what I hear is that not just the capital, but just in general, we're not changing the process at this point exactly. from we're last not. year. So the exactly. process is going to be somewhat the same. Yes, exactly. <coughs> exactly. Um, however, one of the things I've, I've picked up on just through my, the process and fresh eyes on it, um, experiences, one thing I want to make sure um, through the process that the, the department heads, that budget comes up and through the TA and through myself um, so that I have a chance to work with them through that. Um, when the FinCon contacts them, trying to make myself available as well for those meetings when the liaison reaches out. Um, because the budget we put forward is coming from the entirety, myself and those departments, and it's important that we, we're, we're in sync on what we're trying to accomplish and, and, and doing it together. So to that and to the calendar component of it, um, ensuring there's sort of steps in the process um, of the submittal. Um, like I said, Monday I'm excited to formally submit the budget to you folks. Um, there'll be a letter associated with it and all the backup and we can talk a little bit about some of the highlights like we'll talk about today, but um, you know, the steps are really important. Version control is part of that as well. Um, when there's a clear step-by-step -step and there's not multiple versions getting dumped and one pulled back and another set out, it's really important those steps are in place so that we can have a consistent version that goes out um, hopefully once, maybe twice. There's obviously going to be some edits, but trying to limit that's important. So that's something I'm keeping my eyes on. And I've got a whiteboard full of ideas that I've been Version on. control is huge. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so the um, so right now I, I can I'll pass this out to everybody. Um, this is labeled draft for you. <laughs> oh, come on. I just want to be clear and note that the date, I was kind of clear with Kevin on this, the date on the bottom will change for Monday, even if, even if the content stays exactly the same, the draft will disappear and the date will change. So you'll have those direct indicators, and they're on each page, have those direct indicators which version you're looking at, and this will be a process going forward from here on. So um, <clears throat> next steps. So. Um, now that I've given you the draft, you have something you can look at um, between now and Monday to get you sort of understanding where some of the items within the budget, mm -hmm. um, what the changes might look like. Um, we'll come to you on Monday formally submitting the, uh, the, the fiscal 21 budget um, with its back of documentations. Um, and I just want to say, though, um, more importantly than, than I think the ink on this paper, um, the people behind this is what's made this process special and what's made um, all the work and the timelines, the tight timelines, successful. Um, again, Catherine has done tremendous work on holidays. We've been contacting each other on Christmas and on New Year's oh Day, Lord. making sure we're, uh, we're where we are with everything, and she's been working tremendously hard with the departments as well. Um, there's a lot of thought that goes into these budgets when it comes to uh, how they're going to operate, because the way town government works is you really have this shop to, to put the, mo the monies in there that you need to, but you need to do it in a thoughtful way that's truly representative of what our costs are going to be. Um, so just a, a thank you to the department heads. Um, so just some highlights of, of, of the budget. Um, revenue is going to be something that obviously is important to determine how we can operate. Not high enough. <laughs> um, so the sheet I just passed out gives you a little bit of uh, idea of the, of the tax levy, um, what what you can uh, produce on it. A um, couple things just to, to sort of point out. One thing that's really important is new growth. Um, mm -hmm. When we have limitations on how much that tax base can grow, new growth is really important. Um, last year we saw a pretty good amount of um, increase on the new growth uh, project, as I've understood, is Rolling Green. Um, there's 60% of those units, 60% uh, of 11 of those units have still not been accounted for um, from taxation purposes. And so that, coupled with some other new growth opportunities, we're, uh, the assessor's office is seeing about $75,000 this coming year in, in the budget for that. 
Um, we hope to surpass that, but um, that's that's the number that uh, that department is. So we're assuming all 11 will be closed in the coming year. That's my understanding. Okay. Um, that they're hoping to sell them because they're, they're the not developer, pending. The developer certainly hopes so. I would, yes, yes, of course. I'm not saying that. Just go buy it. The open house sign is out. Yeah, I, I went the other day and <laughs> talked up all the units, and, and definitely nine are still in the market, could be off um, all 11. And I know that, um, and just, that number 75 is not solely on the Rolling Green project, but that is the mm -hmm. largest uh, mm -hmm. component of that. Mm -hmm. um, just question on that, Until they are sold, are there tax revenues that the developer pays to us? So they're based on com completion, substantial completion of the project too. So there's certain 60, 40 percent of those 11 units have already been accounted for for the construction and the dollars that they're the value of those uh, partial constructions or, or full construction. So um, yes, there's they they are um, until they reach a certain threshold, they're not taxed. It's, they're taxed at certain partial. You're right, just yeah. partial taxation of the property based on the percentage of completion that's performed. And there's um, a guide that uh, Will uses that sort of outlines how that, that taxation works. Mm -hmm. well, this, I'm asking some questions. Uh, once a CO, a certificate of occupancy has been issued for a property, then it is fully taxed and it is up to the, it is not sold, then it's up to the developer to pay the taxes as though it were sold. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's officially a property completely done. What, what's the COO done? But the, yeah. My understanding. That's my understanding. Yeah, it, as long as the building is, <coughs> is complete, it's not based on the occupancy necessarily. It's based it's on the certificate completion. The certificate right. triggers that to be a completed building. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is, I understand that the taxation. Um, this is just a question. At 100, when it's 100 percent complete, um, then basically the assessor's office uses their formula to determine the value. So upon the sale of that. There's no necessarily further impact on the tax value of it because it isn't. Right. Sorry, well, it's, it's, it's in Maine, you every time when you move into a place, when you get a CO, then you end up your house gets assessed, then reassessed. Mm -hmm. right. But in this case, it is assessed at the point of the 100% completion. At which point, that is the va tax valuation for the potential next owner. Mm -hmm. But the next year could change dramatically based on okay. what happened. Within that, complex. yeah, and I realize it, yeah. things could change could. exactly this time. This is an assessment. That's a really good point. Mm -hmm. um, just a couple other things to point out projections of state, uh, uh, state receipts will be about two million dollars. Projections on local receipts 1.6, chapter 90, uh, a little more than a quarter million dollars. Uh, and some free cash um, was submitted on 12 12. Um, by the treasurer's office, and we did the county. <laughs> sorry, county's office. And um, basically, at this point, uh, we did have a conversation with them today. Uh, they seem to be backlogged on certification. And they, they asked us to call back early next week to an update on. So just by way of recap, it's a rough idea. It's, it's going to be less than last year. <laughs> they <Yeah. don't> like <laughs> We're not really allowed to, to say uh, the undesignated fund balance is about two point two. <laughs> okay. What was in, it last in the year? Two million range. In the case of in the case of the uh, calculated maximum allowable levy number one, it says school districts. It suggests that there's more than one district here. Uh, I think this is only the elementary schools that we're talking about. Correct? We don't we don't put in mass economics there. No, the mass economic goes there as well. Good. Uh, oh, it is in there. Mass economic is, is, is in that economic. eighty thousand. Yeah. yeah, that it, that actually is, but it also could be. Um, it also could be SS, SS Tech or mm -hmm. SSIG. Mm -hmm. It could also be SS Tech. Right now, it, it is just Masco, but. Um, yeah, oh, it's the, just yeah, Masco. This is okay. it's just Masco right now. However, it, if if that were to go out with SS Tech, it could be that as well. So it is. There are two districts, for, for Topsfield. But that amount does not necessarily reflect both districts every year. No, this is just categories that yeah, I, I, categories. I I broke it up into just okay. so that I could keep better track of it. Good. Um, great. The the actual if it were um, the tri town, it would be included in number two. Well, it could be a two, three, four, depending on where it is. It, um, but that would be um, because that's part of the town's debt. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. And you've already said that the school budget is not included in. In, in this budget, 
So the school budget is is leveled at for for placekeeping at three percent. That was their guideline was three percent increase. So for all three of the schools, I increased it by three percent just so that it just kind of lessens mm -hmm. the the blow at the you know when you, just, when you get the final figures. <laughs> And that was in the case of Masco. It was three percent of the operating budget, because you know what they is not the total budget because they they, have, they, they do debt went up and down. In this case, down. Yeah, debt's going down. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. In, in this for this for the purposes of this, it's just three percent across. Including the the because yeah, you don't have the final they, they also summer. take out the they the total, formula where they take out the just just to understand just back in as just, well. It's, it's yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. And it does make a note on that too on the on the budget notes. Okay. So basically, 25.1 million. Uh, that's looking at your total taxes. Mm -hmm. um, and then, if you take in the um, previously approved debt exclusion, uh, as well as school districts, obviously, then it goes up to 26, uh, 376, uh, 26.4 million. Mm -hmm. So we'd look at 25 at the bottom versus 26 to see what the percentage increase is without any overlay. The two bottom numbers. Yes. We don't tax at the maximum level limit, though, do we? Uh, I mean, that's what they give us for the levy limit. It's but a limit. It, We're not at it, though. No. No, in fact, in the last year's budget, the last year's budget was a little bit different. It was 747 thousand that was left on the table. However, when you do the t free cash, reduce the tax rate, that, that plays back into this. Mm -hmm. um, the year before that, it was 188,000 was left on the table, and then before that, 395,000. So it, it goes, it goes um, it, it's been as high as, you know, regularly six to seven hundred, eight hundred thousand dollars One year it was 21,000. So it's, it's gotten a little more consistent. Um, you can't really look at last year's number because we had the Johnny Bristol give back and then we also had to reduce the tax rate as they were anticipating the spike in the debt that they mm -hmm. actually had a higher amount that they did use to reduce the tax rate, it was 500000 mm -hmm. Great, good. So, understanding all that's happened, what is the increase so far that we're looking at here? When you say the increase of the um, In the, the taxes being collected. Oh, we, I don't have that information yet. Yeah, no, we wouldn't have that. Subtracting these two numbers and dividing by the FY20 won't give it to us? Are you looking at, at these numbers here on, on this? Yeah. She's looking at, she's looking at, yep. this, is just, this is just a revenue. This is revenue, exactly. And the, the levy limit, you could look at the difference between the levy limit and probably within a few hundred thousand. It goes get a mm -hmm. sense of what the increase would be. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't apply to these numbers, it applies to what we actually hope to raise. Right, and, and the Finance Committee, they, they maintain a model. They actually, I, I keep a, a separate version of the model to compare with them at all times. Um, and How often do you do that? Um, well, so, um, Mike Hartman mm -hmm. is the member of the Finance Committee, mm -hmm. and Karen Dow is the secondary on this. They last put one out on December 19th. Um, but it's, it's so, preliminary that the numbers wouldn't make sense to you right now. Okay. Um, you know, I, I tie right into what they're doing, but you know, there's some liberties here in terms of what the budget's going to be before the budget was even pressed in. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I try to stay in line with them or at least know where there's, where there's variances. Good. So, um, like I mentioned, on Monday there'll be some more documentation to back up on the revenue side of this, mm -hmm. um, but this is kind of gives you a, 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 a at least starting point on the revenue side to, to start with. Um, so where we spent a lot of our time recently is on the expense side, um, the operating budget component of it. Um, and so just some general things on that. Um, you all have the detail, but here's a... Mm -hmm. breakout of the cost by department. Um, so this is a summary of what's in here? Yes, exactly. Um, so this, this will give you at least an overview of what we're looking at as you're looking at, and then you can dive into the detail. Um, you have a sense of where they line up. 
year over year against each other. Just to add, when you actually get the Excel version of this too, you'll see different um, worksheets on the spreadsheet. And it delves down into two versions of summary. The one that you have there, but also one that's by department, salary and wages and expenses per department. Um, so it works from this 20-page document to a six-page document to a one-page document. Mm -hmm. And that will be at your access. Mm -hmm. And the salaries? that are shown in the budget here based on the existing contracts where we have union contracts. What about the reserve officers? So there, there are two elements right now that are undetermined in the budget um, that are significant. It's the collective bargaining. Um, the, five, uh, the five bargaining units, they all are set to um, expire uh, the 30th of this, this year now. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and if you reach out to Cape Law about involvement and get involved, ball rolling with that as well. Um, so right now what we've done in the budget is we level funded any um, department which uh, has a uh, union, uh, union uh, workforce within it. And we've done some models breaking out different uh, percentages of what it might look like with certain changes uh, based on how negotiations go. So what we have in front of us is the same. Yeah. 1%, 2%, 3%, <coughs> just to get a picture of what it might okay. look like. But what's in here yeah, is 0%. Here percent. In, in those particular categories. Now, anyone who's um, <coughs> is, is not a union employee or not on a contract, police chief, fire chief, captain, myself, um, the rest of the, the employees are based on a step and grade, mm -hmm. uh, or grade and step. Mm -hmm. And um, their positions are outlined in the personnel guidelines from June 25th, 2018, mm -hmm. uh, which the like where they fall in. And each year there's an increase, a call increase associated with each of those positions based on an hourly rate, based on the number of hours they work, multiplied by um, 52.4 this coming year. 52.2 for this year, is 52.4 the number of weeks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that gets us the salary. So Down from last year, though, is that the, that's yes, the point? Yes. yes. Uh, we, right. we so it's a little bit easier on the budget plan. Yeah. 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 So the, um, the numbers for those positions, you will see an increase on those because those are known um, increases associated with salaries. But they're, not, you're correct. they're not subject to uh, corporate volume. negotiations. But uh, you mentioned it's as far as the rules and the uh, personal rules and regulations. <coughs> the, uh, the, the movement in the grid is described in that, but not the amount of change in the overall grid itself. That's mm -hmm. not that's not part of the rules and regs. That, that's up to us. The increase year over year, what that looks like. If there's an increase or whatever, mm -hmm. the case may be. And that decision, what's in here, is I assume 2% from what we discussed in the it, recent past? A 2.75% movement across and then a 2% yeah, so excuse me, That's the one that is part of the grid itself and that's part of the rules and regulations. That, that that step move, it's in there. Every, each year, each year, step to get that by one. Correct. The change in the grid itself, though, that it would change. Is there any change in the grid itself? The answer is yes. And what is what is that change? And that change is not subject to the rules and regs. Making a change is subject to how you go about whatever you do mm -hmm. with it. But there's no amount of percent or anything like that in the rules and regs. And so that, that's what the question is. Where are we on that, on the grid itself? 2%? 2%. I, I've never seen the 2.75% as being part of the rules and regs. I mean, it could be. I just have not seen that. This has always been a function of the town administrator, and this is something that Robin had put forth, the, um, the current personnel pay grid. Um, and she did send that to the Finance Committee upon completion of that as well. So th I think it's worthy of us to, for me to Understand. The reason I say it's part of the rules and regs <coughs> is that if you get a, uh, an acceptable performance review, then your position, your position on the grid increases if you are not already at the top of the grid. Is that not part of our rules and regs? That, that is a step. That is. That's what we call okay. a step. That's the step. Yeah. That's, step That's, That's part step. of the rules and regs. That's what I mean. Oh, the amount of 2.75. I think there's two questions That's, in that grid's first being put okay. together. Is what's the step across and what's the cola? The cola, exactly. Yeah. The only we were talking about the cola. Right. The cola's been put in? Uh, I, we, we haven't determined the cola. That we're all on board with what the situation is. The one that's of question in my mind would be 
if you would, the coal, or yeah. whatever it's called. It's really not a coal. Increase. It's not yeah. driven by the government's numbers or whatever. It's what we choose to do, if anything. Uh, and I just want to understand what it is that we're, what numbers we're looking at in this budget. We, we know what we're looking at for the seats, collective bargaining, zero at this point. We know also that there's some models built with other ones. Okay. The second question is the non-collective bargaining, how are they shown up in here? They're shown up as a change in the movement in the grid, assuming that everybody is performing adequately. I guess. The steps, are the steps included <coughs> in is an assumption around the coal, the so-called the, There is a, what's considered to be the approved pay grid for FY 2021. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that includes 2.75% step mm -hmm. going across, and a 2% coal is also built into that. So you okay. built that in for these numbers. Yes. And that's in here. That's representative yes. energy. Right. Yeah. Now that 2% coal is something that is discretionary, clearly discretionary on our part, without doing anything with rules and regulations of the grid or anything of that nature. As a matter of fact, we're doing something with the grid if we put 2% in, we're increasing it. So that's a decision mm -hmm. to change the grid from this year. Mm -hmm. I right? believe that's at our discretion, uh, it, the it, additional. Yeah, it's been it's been the function of the town administrator since I've been here. And every year there has been an increase in Yeah. Okay, now we know, that the, the, we know the FinCom has concerns about that, as I think all of us do, because we know how to add two and two and three quarter together, and we know what that equals. Well, not everybody, because some people are at the top, but not many. Uh, but that's a lot of that's a lot of increase each year, uh, which is, as people would typically say, unsustainable. Can I, so is there any discussion on that within within the work you've done? So we have we haven't addressed that directly because it was already it was already passed along to the departments from okay. my predecessor. Um, it was inserted in the budget at the time I was coming in. We, I did have some conversations with the team about that. We have had conversations about what the, to understand what that model looks like, the history behind it as well, and what we've seen year over year. Um, and so this year's submittal was in line with a number of years prior of how the, the increases have gone. Um, but it does represent okay. a, a, the bump that you Now mentioned. I know what it is and what, what yeah. to get there. I'd, I'd like I, to clarify uh, Dick's point speak up if I'm not saying something correct here, but there is concern on the parts of several people that this pay grid thing is unsustainable unless we agree to do a 2.5% override every year, okay? It's, it's gotten nearly that bad. Now, I don't expect to resolve that today, I don't expect to resolve that in the next six months, but that's one of the important things that we got to start talking about to get get that pay grade thing under control. But we got there a few years ago because we were we had a, an advisor that said you're not paying your employees well enough, and that's why you can't keep them and that kind of stuff. So the pay grade was set up, and everybody was happy. But the fact of the matter is, it's becoming unsustainable, in my opinion, and the part of our finance committee. Okay, that's something we've got to work on. We've got other issues with labor contracts that we have to address too that are glaring mm -hmm. problems and uh, we'll, we'll be talking about those over the next few months. We've had this conversation frequently at the finance committee meetings as yeah. well and they've yeah. looked at it in the totality though that yeah. they need to, it's not just the personnel bylaws, it's also the school, the unions, they talked about setting up meetings with the board of selectmen to look at the, look at the, the pay range on a whole among the whole town, mm -hmm. the school okay. and town together. Mm -hmm. and no question because the teachers have strong unions and represent critical portions and a large number of employees, mm -hmm. their contract structures have tended to drive the, 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 the way this is done. Mm -hmm. you, have, you know, union um, highway workers or something, whether you've got less than a dozen, but you might have 60 teachers across the system or something. The um, question that I have, and again, I'm, this is going on my basis of, of mass going to schools are a little bit different. Um, what would happen is the steps would increase every year. In other words, those, you have a grid, the grid stays the same. The person moves across the grid. Mm -hmm. They would also go up. You, you get something for being in the job successfully, and you would get something based upon your, your um, level of achievement in terms of grades and so on and so forth. But the dollar amounts in the grid never changed. The individuals within a given area would get whatever the so-called COLA was each year. But you kept the numbers the same. So if somebody came in 
at step seven two years from now and we didn't change the grid. They would start at the same rate they'd start if they came in now. So it isn't that the grid itself changes, it's just everybody on the grid moves up by that 2% or whatever we agree on. The grid numbers themselves, my understanding is, don't change. Is that accurate? I'm not sure I follow how you say the, the grid numbers don't change, but they don't. Because if you hire somebody in, you hire them in on the grid as a starting place, and then they get the colas in addition to whatever but, steps. But the way that, the way that, and just going to qualify, it's officially not a cola, but we call it a cola. Because it's I, well, yeah, I agree about. it's not. We use yeah, that because it's an easy so term. As long as yeah. we agree. The application of the cola goes against the grid as a whole and increases every number in every position in the grid by that amount. That's what the cola does. So and the that's grid true itself the teachers. changes numbers. That's true of the teachers. That, that's the way that, theirs works. And sometimes theirs is 1%, sometimes 2%, whatever. But theirs works the same way. That's how it goes up. So let's go back to the example. It's always good to work with an example. Somebody who was hired as a teacher two years ago at uh, step one, because that's their first year, Right. at step one uh, for a, a bachelor's degree so you get $40, um, is going to get, two years ago, got $45,000. Okay. If we hire them today, they don't get 45, they get 45 it's plus two, two. what was put in last year for the grid and the following year because we said two years ago. That's different two. than math. And, and so it comes out to be, you know, something like 47 and three, yeah. three, so th that's what I'm trying to clarify, Dick, because in MASCO, the grid numbers never change unless the school committee chooses to change them, and it's not an annual thing, which means the starting numbers stay the same. And if the person who was hired last year at 40,000 gets a 5%, just big numbers, to you, gets 5% and is now getting 42,000, it doesn't mean the next person we hire in at that level starts at 42. No, they're still starting at 40. The grid stays the same. Everybody currently employed on the grid moves up. To be clear, though, the person who the, the person who got hired last year and gets this five percent. Yep. The five percent is because they have one more year experience. This is the teacher side, and the teacher side grid goes the way they think of it is this is years of service up to thirteen. They have added, they try to add sometimes another one. But basically, they have 13 years of service this way, and this way, it, it uh, yeah, right. This way is bachelor's, this is bachelor's plus 15, this is master's, all of those kinds. Of, that's the amount of education that they have. So their grid is moving this way based on years, and this way based on education. Right, there are three raises most teachers and, get. And the, and the third raise is that the entire grid goes up by. 0%, 1%, 2%, whatever the, the agreement is in the contract for that particular year. See, and that's not what happens, at least at NASCO. The grid stays the same. You do, you do steps. I'm not sure that you I do you're columns, very much into it, but I'm not. But if you're at the, the top case. of the grid and so on, um, you only get the um, you only get the so-called cola. And how do you get the cola if you're at the very top? How do you get the cola? Yeah, everybody gets the cola because... And when you get the cola is the entire grid goes up by 1% or 2% or whatever. The grid that you're paying goes up, the grid that is used to start it. If somebody comes in and they qualify with a master's at a certain level of experience and you bring them in at um, master's step seven, for whatever reason, typically what we would do, if they didn't have experience, they come in master's step one. And but they, they start with a school system, yeah. whatever, and they might yeah. give them seven. But what I'm hearing here is with only two things, both the steps and the cost of living, you're saying the entire grid effectively goes up. Last yes. year in the budget, they yes. you know, it was put into the it it salary compensation study, and they, they denied that. And then at the end of the session, um, Shay had actually volunteered to, to review and you know, get deep into the, the pays across the town, including the okay. school. One thing after another. He, he didn't get to it this year, but it's very much on their radar as well. And like I said, they also plan to have conversations with the board to look at it. I think I think that's great, and I appreciate because I think what's happened is I've come to an understanding of a very significant difference between the salary grid as we talk about it here for town employees, where there's one thing that's changed at a discretionary level, another that's changed by contractual formula as you move on your steps. 
whereas in the school system, the grid represented so-called steps and columns, experience and health, experience in this job and educational level. <coughs> and the COLA was on top of that. So for us, each teacher just saw their pay go up. If you took the individuals and mapped them against it, you might find somebody at column four, step seven, who's making more than somebody um, at that level because they, in fact, they would had more time to be here, they collected more colas, they never go backwards. But, um, anyway, I don't need to explain what MASCO does. Within I step, the idea is within step, you would go up because you, quote, have more experience. Is that what you're saying? Yes, yeah. but right. you, you have to say, when you say the grid, I have this rather standard, rigid model in my mind because that's what I was used to. And I think I'm understanding now that because we do race across the board and it's one of only two factors, the reality is it does go up. And that we actually have the freedom for non-union people, whom we're talking about here, to start them at whatever salary we want. So that <laughs> they're not bound to start at what somebody else started at that, so whatever we negotiate. Then they're on the grid and they move up with everybody else. That makes more sense. Our me. grid, and, and our grid, in a sense, never moves. Uh, it's different, though, I see. Our grid never moves. A person never moves in, in our grid this way unless their job changes. Exactly. So to keep the same job, any sort of, if you'll call it, vertical motion this way is entirely a function of what everybody gets, which is yeah, why the grid itself. The assistant moves. assessor and yeah. the assessor left, and now you're the assessor. Change in job, go up as a grid, mm -hmm. one or yeah. two steps, whatever it happens. Exactly. To that's the only way that that changes. Okay. One thing that I think would be helpful, and FinCom asked this last year, and we did not provide it, the town administrator did not want to provide it, oh, yeah. was information about where everybody non-union is right now in mm -hmm. the pay grid. Because they yeah. were trying to do some projections about at what point are we going to hit the top, or will everybody mm -hmm. be at the top, mm -hmm. in which case we won't have the 2.75% being added on. Mm -hmm. um, that is something that they're going to need to look at that total picture. They do not have the salary information right now for our people. So on the, uh, the line items, uh, itemized budget, it does actually, it references, I believe, the uh, for, for in each here, position, grade yeah. stuff. So it, it's not a clean version that lists everything out uh, mm -hmm. on one sheet, per se? Um, yeah, because What's they're going to need that to put into their model, so it's right. going to be very yeah. tough for them to try to extract. The yeah. first page, for example, purchasing From development. Where are you? The first page, yeah. purchasing development under the budget notes. Personal bylaws, FY21, grade 7, step 8. It says that for every, every position that's on the bylaws. But it, we, we, that's we really we tough, can, I think, for them to extract. I we think can certainly. Yeah, there's spreadsheets. We have 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. How many people do we have? 24, 25? I think there's more than that. I don't have it off the top of my okay. head. Okay. It's 30 people in one spreadsheet that says yeah, the person just where they are. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. and what uh, step they're at. Right. So that you I know, know at what point it's going to peak absolutely. and when is it going to start. I think that's good information for everybody to have eyes wide open on what people are making. Absolutely. And it, it's on the sheet to start with, but we'll get you a more clean copy. So people oh, for a fitting pump. They have been asking for it for a year. What I think we're doing here, which is most important, is recognizing there are some conversations about significant long-term changes, or say changes with long-term impacts, mm -hmm. that need to start in county year, or should we call it FY 2021. Um, we're going to get this budget through without trying to push a lot of changes and so on, but um, there will need to be some and should be some conversations of exactly the type we're talking about. Mm -hmm. you know, how are we going to slow the growth past our ability to pay, and so on. And um, because I'm that delighted we're having is also that. really helpful going into budget negotiations with the unions. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, well, we could have that picture of what yeah, the no, town is, I agree totally. is facing, and they don't have that sure. information right yeah. now. It's, no, it's absolutely, absolutely the right conversation. Have our largest expenditure as, as a town is is salaries. It's mm -hmm. very clearly, yeah. And, and we've got a great team, great people, people I've worked with are fantastic. <laughs> But, That's um, the important thing. No, absolutely. We, but, we I mean, have the right people. The, the, uh, to the point earlier, sustainability, um, mm -hmm. it, it's a reality. You know, what, what's, what makes the most sense for Topfield? Um, and to make so it fair, because usually what's happened is the non-union folks are the only ones that are really discussed at the time of the budget. Because that has some flexibility because mm -hmm. the contracts have already been signed. Mm -hmm. And it puts them in an unfair position. Sure. So if all of that information is gathered early enough to make a difference to the, the contracts, 
Mm -hmm. uh, that it's not only the, the non-union folks who are constantly. Yeah, no, that makes sense. It's, it's, pay is but it's, it's absolutely the right place to start with. It's, and it's we understand special. also what the numbers here are. You're mm -hmm. very clear on it. Mm -hmm. Zero for the unions. Mm -hmm. The grid, the grid, two percent, all the grid based on stuff is great. Mm -hmm. Okay, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so this this sheet right here that I'm, I'm now passing out, the uh, it just shows year over year over the last four years what our increases increases to the bu operating budget has looked like. The below the line on each of these columns, the bottom line shows what the non-school portion, so the town only budget, and what that increase has looked like. Um, so as you can see, the of the last, including this year, four years, this one is, is right at or below what we've seen historically um, for the most part. So just to give it some reference. Um, so um, it's always good to look back historically what, what we've done to sort of position ourselves and where we're lining up. It's, it's a very good thing to have here. Uh, this is helpful. I can't, I'm amazed at the uh, the second one down is a minus, and the third one goes up to six percent. I mean, it's almost like it was just a, a, an unusual anomaly. We don't understand what that was. Yeah, so Catherine and I were actually talking about this yesterday, um, and this is one of those items. I said we were 90, 95 percent there. There's so many line items within this budget that could could cause that change mm -hmm. um, that we, we were going to take a, a look we at. We have it. to understand what that is. We'll have some better information for you on it. But just broadly speaking, one, at least give you for yep. today's purposes, at least. Because that, that feels like the, 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 the debt, uh, the money that was set aside for debt or something like that. Yeah, that's what we're going to yeah. do. Yeah. I think is. the place that you want to look at the comparison is, is in the expenditures. In the expenditures. Yeah, and that's that's more realistic. Well, that's the debt. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. yeah. or even if you include and the debt, just the expenditures right. from year to year. Mm -hmm. But if you remember, during, um, let's see, what, so 2019 and 18, there was a lot of debt in the air, and we were making estimates based on timing of when we right. were going to bond. Right. And so you have to have enough to pay out. for the yeah. short-term debt. You got to yeah. pay your bills. Yeah. All yeah. That's okay. yes. I think including just <clears throat> a little narrative on the biggest reasons that yeah. we went from 4.9 percent to minus 2.3 mm -hmm. percent. A little can narrow. I, offer a different <coughs> I would tend to hold this one until we do more of what Catherine said. Oh, I agree. I don't think we have just it right squeeze now. out so that we have yeah. a meaningful review of what's here. This is a great place to start. We're going to need As more information, but ultimately, I think yeah. this will be a very helpful thing for us, frankly, for Excellent. the FinCon too, to understand. Um, yeah. This is a piece of paper we haven't looked at clearly in the past. Um, so just it, some of the highlights, I guess, at this point, just to kind of give you a quick tour of what the operating budget looks like. Um, we'll, what we're planning to do, as the chairman said earlier, is uh, the next three working sessions that we'll have um, is to carve out time for specific departments within each of those. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll schedule that um, to, to talk in depth about each of the line items. Um, the TA and selecting budget obviously um, is one that um, we're very intimately close to in the sense that we're... Start with that one. <laughs> we start with that one. Um, you know, with the collective bargaining coming up, um, one thing that we did do is we, we looked at the actuals the last time negotiations happened, it was about $70,000. We have budgeted $55,000 annually for uh, legal fees. And so we're looking at, uh, for this year, bumping that up to give us a little bit of um, some availability. We also have the, the two cable contracts, which we'll be negotiating as well. So there will be some, some legal fees this coming year that come up. And so we wanted to make sure we had some coverage. We didn't get all the way up to that 70 because we, we want to work within our means. And we don't want to. We want to make sure. But we want to make sure we have enough coverage. So when we need to make that call during the contract negotiations, we can. Um, there's also some um, regards to the facilities management. Um, um, spent some real time understanding facility dude and meeting Paul and how the the arrangement's been working. And it seems like the path that the, the town was taking and, and is is taking right now is the right path. Um, right now, departments in their individual buildings or are just picking up the phone when there's a leaky pipe and they're trying to find that, that plumber or handing them to come and help them out. When rather than being on the streets protecting as a police officer or a firefighter or whatever they might be doing or helping out the children's section of the library, 
they're worrying about that. So having that facilities person makes a lot of sense to be able to coordinate those efforts in the facility due program um, is going to allow for those work orders to even expedite it further. So there's a system that, that's been built out. Donna Rich has done a lot of work on that, gets a lot of credit for the, that work to bring it to where it is. Um, that we're looking at actually based on expanding it beyond, it was sort of a pilot as I understand it, use uh, the facility maintenance at Town Hall, expanding that out uh, to cover all the buildings so that um, we have a, a person immediately that someone can call if there's an issue uh, and that person is then responsible for seeing that project. We, we started that conversation with the FinCom and we had nothing for, for facilities manager. Mm -hmm. And uh, we talked about the fact that we had a brand new building here that cost 10 million bucks and nobody on site or in town to take care of it. Yeah. And uh, so that's how we hired Paul. Right. Uh, FinCom uh, agreed to give us 25 grand to start that process. And, and uh, it's grown a little bit mm -hmm. uh, because of uh, using facility dude as a guidance. And uh, uh, he's done some good things and he's, and he's pushing out into other, because of facility dude, he's pushing out into other facilities, mm -hmm. right? The library, fire and police and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, I, I hope and I kind of expect that that will continue and will grow appropriately. Yeah, no, it's, it, it's, it's good. Again, we've got some estimates of what we think now the costs, now that we're expanding, that will be in the numbers you'll see as we go through this are more conservative than I think that they would like. Uh, but I think that's because, we, again, we want to live within our needs and, and, and uh, not put too much into the budget and then have to pull back. I think it's, we want to make incremental steps when it comes to that. And sort of the actuals to date have shown that there is a need to grow it already. Um, and the expansion that sort of I mean, further um, solidifies the need. When are you looking at that to be a regional position or just for top scale? Currently for top scale. Currently for top scale. And, and does it have to be a top scale position or can it be an outsource position? In other words, they've got to be people in the business. Maybe Paul is the one to, to do it for the next two years or something years of internship. But it, I don't think it's a full-time position, and perhaps we some and there's higher. We, we didn't, we, he is a consultant. He's been engaged as a consultant to help us out, which to me is a great way to go about doing yeah. it. Uh, if he's happy with it too and he's doing a good job, I think that might be the at least the current direction. Maybe in the future we could look at regional. But as soon as you do regional, it's we own the people, right? We might or another time. Uh, there's uh, there's been sooner or later you got to pay. To Lynn's yeah, point, there's been some conversation about that already. There's some yeah, we need possibility. To that needs to be looked at for sure. Are we looking at increasing the number of hours? Uh, right now, Paul, I don't know how many hours that translated into with the 25,000. Sure, so right now, um, we're five months left, six months left. Um, we're already spent, I believe, close to three fourths. Or two thirds of the budget. We're all, we're tracking to to mm -hmm. to have a greater need financially than that, that line item. A lot of it, I think, was due to the onboarding of facility due. Yeah, that was a big yeah. undertaking. Yeah, and that took real time. Mm -hmm. And so when we've sat down to sort of estimate now that we have facility due and the process associated with how that will work for work orders, and looked at the entirety of the different buildings, fire station, police station, library, and others, um, what that would look like. Um, the number was 12 hours a week which would represent about $47,000 a year. And we've pared that down to $35,000. Again, trying to make sure that we're taking the right incremental steps and not just going full, fully for it. Um, we're gonna continue to, to, I need to circle back with Paul again, just to, to let him know where we, where we are and how much we can get out of that. But um, there's a lot of unknowns still around it because of the facility dude now being, will, will be on board in the next few months officially with the different departments. Uh, to the point of re regionalization, it doesn't mean they have to be an employee. It can be a contractor who's working several towns where you get a contract yeah, of scale. Yeah, it's yeah, a point of contract where they agree to respond at a set rate for a period of time so that you know what you're into. Mm -hmm. And in theory, if it's done properly, you get a better deal each time you're called, not only in terms of an expected rate that is as favorable to town as possible, but also that there's a certain obligation on their part to come. I, I, think, there's call two it ten times. I think there's two elements in it. One is that of 
a manager who brings together all of these things. Yeah, I agree. And the second piece is the actual doer of some of them. You're right. So yeah. do we need to do something? Yes, we do based on a schedule that we need to do it, or we have a problem, we need to do something because we've got to get to yeah. back up. Mm -hmm. So that's what the manager part is doing, and then the actual call. Yeah, I agree. I guess it's great. I'm just disappointed I'm not going to get the shovel anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't have to suck. <laughs> I was out there for the salt of that, the slipper. Um, no, it's, uh, it's something in our budget. I just want to point it out, and we'll have a further conversation. If you intend, if you intend to get here the first before anybody else in the morning, you've got a shovel. That's the way it's all done. I, I, I know. Done that. It's, it's, it's just like, he's not the first one to see. Yeah. 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 Just say I was out there. Big footprints. <laughs> yeah. Footprints coming up in the footprint of snow. <laughs> as, as one of our uh, wise uh, FinCom chair said one time to the people that were complaining, he said, we all do windows. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. true. No, so that, that, that's just another one I want to make sure I flag for, for you folks as you, as you review that. Because again, I think the, uh, the TA budget is one that should get the, the scrutiny and should be looked at and vetted. Um, so I just want to make you aware of that. Mm -hmm. um, just generally within the budget, um, I've just got some quick notes, just highlights. Um, there are um, a lot of just um, contractual increases. Munis system, for example, is mm -hmm. one. Um, some of our... Um, our GIS system, for example, is another, uh, usually and hopefully a nominal increase um, associated. You'll see that throughout the budget. Um, the, Can I ask a question? Sure, of course. From Catherine. Uh, Catherine, if I remember correctly, you have separated out software from other maintenance. It used to be a very big one that had both of them. Did you do that with two line items yeah, last, last a, year? Yes. So I want to compliment you on that. It was, it was a real problem because we were mixing software which mm -hmm. has this kind of driven by outside. We, we don't have a control over it and it's mm -hmm. sole so source. And then we had the uh, maintenance in it. It was the biggest one line item in there, but Catherine's done the job of breaking those things out. So I think it's helpful because it also helps us answer questions when people ask. Why did this go up? The whole thing in that particular category line item has That's to do good. with software, and we can explain what happens with software these days, mm -hmm. and we don't necessarily control it that well. Good point. Um, yeah, the, the other two is there's there's still some unknowns around heating and mm -hmm. providing power to this building now that we're moved in. We don't have a full year of actuals yet, as I understand it. Mm -hmm. So we did make some assumptions on there. Um, with regards to what that looks like. Mm -hmm. Only this building, that's an issue. Just this building. Okay. Um, every other building that there's no cost. We were assuming no cost. whatever gas costs is going to be the same yeah. or whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. okay. And we've, we've been able to, with our budget, we, we, you'll see in there there's some changes within that just to be a little more accurate. Um, the other thing I'll mention too is that um, the, town, the, the clerk's office, it's not large increases, but because there will be three elections this coming year rather than two, um, there's about a, an increase on each, uh, a number of the line items around um, rental of facilities for the election, um, personnel. personnel being there, right, exact election personnel. Do we have to rent Masco? It's $150. Yes. Oh, 150 bucks. Okay, I'm not going to come in. <laughs> um, and then obviously there's, there's um, with the new chief as well, there'll be, um, we'll, we'll be doing a search. Um, 